ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, PK Subban. Yeah, PK. How you doing, brother? I'm great. I'm great. Just licking my wounds. Had a had a long night last night, early morning tonight, but um, Today. all good. All good in the world of hockey. I, I know yesterday you were campaigning hard to be a part of uh, Stanley Cup celebrations last night, whether it was the Oilers or the team that you <laughs> picked, the Florida Panthers in seven games. Did any of the boys remember and appreciate that you picked them in game seven? And did you have a chance to celebrate last night with any of the Florida Panthers? Didn't get the call for the uh, Stanley Cup celebration oh, last night. No. Did no. not get the call. <laughs> actually had a couple of Florida Panthers fans actually let me know that I suck, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. They were screaming that at me in the building. So that was the highlight of my night, actually. Um, but you know what? Last night got to catch up with all the ESPN folks. Uh, we had a couple right. barley sandwiches, right. tied one on. Yeah. Great night. Last night with Mess. Mess had his son in the mix last night. Watched the game with us the whole night. Had a couple barley sandwiches with him. And, uh, yeah, we're off. Did it turn into a gong show or mm -hmm. with the ESPN crew? Because this is a wrap-up of a hell of a season, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have been on the road for the last three weeks, yeah. too. Or four weeks, maybe. It, so this was kind of a wrap-up for you guys. You did a great job. I hope you guys celebrated how great, great you guys yeah. did for the sport, PK. Yeah, no, you know what? Uh, the whole team, um, it was a celebratory night, I think. For us, that was our Stanley Cup. You know, um, it's a it's a long road and it's a huge responsibility at ESPN, was, specifically was. with hockey. You know, we're trying to grow the game. Um, we're trying to highlight the superstars, highlight all the bright spots in our game. And you know, as much as it's got to be entertaining, it's got to be educational too. We had a lot of new fans. I think learn things about our game and about the players in it. And uh, you know, we're pretty happy at where we sit right now. We're uh, pretty excited about next season and the future for hockey. But what a day this is for hockey. I mean, the first Stanley Cup in Florida Panthers history, well-deserved. Um, you know, couldn't have gone to a better team. They earned it. They deserved it. They went to the final last year. They lost. They learned. They got back there, and they got it done. And uh, as you heard Paul Maurice said, they didn't want it any other way. They knew it was going to be tough. And that is the way it should be. It's the hardest trophy to win. And uh, it took everything they had to get it done. And that's what stays with you forever. That's why it's a brotherhood. That's why it's not a... Mark Messier said this on the broadcast yesterday. He's sick and tired of hearing people say group. You know, he doesn't even think of it as a team. He thinks of it as a family. And you could see that last night with all the families and the kids uh, on the ice and wives and girlfriends, all the people. You could just see sort of that Charlotte's web of everybody that was touched and connected to the Florida Panthers organization and those players that helped get it done because it's a, it's a long journey, man. Like, that's a long road to get there. It's 82-game season, four really hard rounds, lots of travel, lots of ups and downs. You know, people have lives too, lots of things going on in your personal life with family and all that stuff. So to get there... It's their moment now, and they should be enjoying it. I'll tell you this right now. Uh, you know, listen, I could easily party my way out of the league after winning the Cup. So I hope those guys <laughs> enjoy it and get back in the gym because I, I think they're going to have a good enough team to potentially do it again. I don't know if there you saw go. there at the bottom, a Canadian team has not won since 1993. <laughs> <laughs> in 19, it's our sport. That's right. Boom. It's our sport, and we are, yep. Sorry, it's hot. it's hot in the oven, pal. When you go against the United States of America, especially if you're from Canada, you got no shot. No, uh, that's what I'm learning. That's what stats are telling us. First time since 1945 a team goes up three zip in a series, lets the other team come back, and then ends up winning in Game 7. The Toronto Maple Leafs did that to the Detroit Red Wings in 1945. I think a big reason why they won Game 7 is obviously they came out a little different and yada, yada, yada. But, but bro, Hey, old Bob was getting Bobby chants throughout the third period, and there was numerous saves where if you're watching along live, you couldn't help but think to yourself, well, if Bob's going to stop that or if they're not going to score on that, I guess the hockey gods are with the Florida Panthers tonight. Was Bobrovsky all the way back in full form whenever you're watching him live? And when Connor McDavid has this one here in a matter of moments right in front, wide open, and Bob gets the big – here, I think it's going to be right here. Bang, Connor McDavid. Mm. Stop, stop, diving bodies in front of the net, and it doesn't go in, and they were under a barrage all third period. 
Did you think that Bobrovsky was going to be the difference maker early in this? And how did you feel watching Bobby do his thing? Well, what a I was confident in that. Uh, uh, people thought I was nuts uh, for picking Florida to win that game last night. But uh, a couple things. One, Sergei Bobrovsky has been the best defensive player on the best defensive team the past two seasons. The Florida Panthers have been the best defensive team and the hardest team to play against the past two years, and he's a big part of that. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, as great as Florida is, he covered up a lot of mistakes. He plugged a lot of holes for that team, and I think what we saw in the latter part of the, the Stanley Cup Final was him just mentally and physically exhausted. And I'm going to tell you, this whole clip here is like the season in a nutshell for them. It's desperation. These guys blocked a ton of shots. They sacrificed their body. They played the right way. I mean, that's Vladimir Tarasenko at the top of your screen there, who is a superstar, has won a Stanley Cup for St. Louis, had scored goals. Guys would kill to have the skill that that guy has. But everything that you're seeing in this clip has nothing to do with skill. It has to do with heart, will, and, you know, those guys laid it all on the line. They emptied the tank last night, and that's who they are in a nutshell. They had to get back to their identity, and that's defense first. But it starts with Bob, and Bob was phenomenal. He was phenomenal in this game. I knew once he got a little bit of rest and some recovery time for one game, he could do it, and he made all the saves when he needed to do it. But Gustav Forsling, I said he was the best shutdown defenseman in the game. Well, he made the biggest play of his life on Connor McDavid when he had that empty net. If you watch carefully, he's, it's stick on stick, it's man on man, and he saves their season, really. I mean, Edmonton ties that up. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to beat Connor McDavid in extra time. Edmonton was putting on the pressure, but they bent, they didn't break. Look at that stick by Forsling. Unbelievable. Let you go ahead and eat that. You talk about Tarasenko up in the front. These dudes are putting their faces in front of a puck that just could be going like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. So, guys right there. Just... This isn't just like, oh, they're they're trying to block a shot. Like people say that, and I think people new to hockey are like, yeah, they block a shot. They got a bunch of pad on. It's like they don't have a bunch of pads on. There's a lot of exposed areas where there isn't pads because they oh. have to for the way they skate. And also their faces are mm -hmm. wide open. Yeah. And if you see most hockey players smile, they got busted. Grills. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and just face has just been hit with pucks all over the place. So that type of dedication, that type of grit, that type of will to win is beautiful. It's great for the sport, and it's great for Florida Panther fans. Darius J. Baller. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I got to ask you, PK. Uh, sorry, Barky. Uh, I told night. you. <laughs> I told you. Hey. You were on the right side. You, you, you were on the right side of history. I appreciate you. But started off, looked like it might have been a high scoring one. Obviously, quick back to back goals. But like you said earlier, got back to kind of Florida uh, Panther hockey. What was different? You know, able been able to stifle Connor McDavid and those guys for this game and I, and kind of some of the last game as well. With uh, as far as regards to Connor, but what was different as far as getting back to our defensive uh, game plan and mentality? Well, defense wins championships. Uh, it don't matter what sport you're in. Uh, you need offense, and I think that performance last night showed what winning in the NHL is all about. You, can, you have to have skill. You have to have a mix of all of it. But if your players don't have the testicular fortitude, man-to-man, -to, -man, mm. to outwork your opponent and beat the guy across from you, yep. and that means putting it all on the line. If you got to block shots, if you got to get physical, you got to win puck battles— uh, I, I think that the Florida Panthers, out of any team in the league, had the most buy-in. Those guys all bought in. And what you have to give credit for, there's a lot of guys on that team that did not play in the Stanley Cup final last year. I think it's like eight or nine guys. Lusterinen was there. He had a broken leg. He didn't play. So they had guys who had to come in and get that experience quickly. And I think the culture that they built in that locker room, starting with Matthew Kachuk, that was the difference. That is the difference. That's what you lean on when you face adversity is do I trust the guys in this locker room? And that's why I picked them. I felt that they were the best team and the closest team because of what they because of what they went through last season. To go to a Stanley Cup final and get back in this situation, be up 3 nothing and have that team come back, the only thing you can lean on are your past experiences and looking around that locker room. Do I know the guys that are in here? Do I believe in those guys? And I, 
I truly believe that they had a tight group and they believed in each other. They just needed to reset and get back to their identity, and that's meat and potatoes. You know, not trying to make it look pretty. You know, just get your hands dirty and get it done. And they did. Protein and starch. Let's get out there. Let's do some grit and jam and some sun paper and do this entire thing. Paul Maurice, whenever he was asked in a follow-up question after he took the cup and lifted it and looked at it and did the whole thing, goes back to his interview and he talks about everything being hard and that's how we won it. It's Florida Panther way. And then she followed up and said, why do you think this group of guys or whatever – and he talks about how close they are. Mm-hmm. They're like, this team is incredibly close. Like, sign guys at the trade deadline. They fit in perfectly. Like, we have a crew, which leads to Ty Schmidt's question for you, PK. Yeah, PK, obviously hate doing this the night after they win. But, you know, it's, it's – No, got, no, got to do it. Yeah, you have to do it. And you just mentioned, you know, like them, they, they look good to potentially repeat next year. But a lot of their key guys, they have signed for multiple years here. And you just mentioned it with, you know, like the like th- what they have in the locker room and how close they are and th- the chemistry and and all that kind of stuff. Are we looking at like a potential dynasty with the Panthers oh, no. here or, or, oh. or how, how do I mean, how do we approach this? Well, I- I'll say this. They're going to have to retweak their, their defense a little bit. I, I think they're going to have to share that up. Uh, obviously, I think Montour's contracts up, um, you know, th- they're going to have to retool that. I think that they're going to have to continue to get some speed and skill in that lineup. Their power play was non-existent. Uh, that's an issue. They're going to have to address the power play uh, quarterback at the top. Oliver Ecker and Larson was put into that situation. I don't know if that's someone that they're going to look at to run the power play next year, maybe to start the season, but they're going to need somebody back there that can log, log those minutes and, and, and play that power play because – for them to win another Stanley, Stanley Cup, they're going to need special teams to get it done. And uh, the, the way that they played, though, the brand of hockey that they played was a very, very tough brand of hockey. We haven't seen a team play that way in a long time in the National Hockey League, man-to-man. So is it potential that they can be a dynasty? Maybe. But uh, there's a lot of hockey left to be played. I wouldn't. Be saying that's necessarily sure. Connor McDavid might have a uh, might have uh, something to say about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, speaking of Connor McDavid, you know that's brand right there. That's brand. It's Jim Harbaugh football. Yep. yep. That's Florida Panther yep. hockey. Yep. I mean, there's numerous other teams. Pittsburgh Penguins, obviously. We right, got one sure. guy that does this. He's actually a lefty. His name's Sidney Crosby. He's our best player. <laughs> so our best player is also our toughest guy, which is certainly a problem in Pittsburgh. Sure. We don't need to talk about Pittsburgh today. We don't need to talk about Pittsburgh. Yeah, they're today. never winning the Cubs, so don't worry. Well, they have. We already have. Sorry, again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Never again. Anyway, yeah, that Lordo that D Bud is drinking out of today mm, yeah. mm-hmm. came from this side. That came from right here. Probably. What? That came from right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they have it. Actually, it actually came from, from right there. From, from right here. Bakes and I did taste that sweet nectar last year. I'm, yeah. yeah, but that thing was lifted quickly right back to Hockey Town, right over here. So I mean, right. that's where it's hanging Indiana? out. Indiana? Boston next year. Uh, like no, no, Pittsburgh. I mean, there's. Detroit, listen, 1945, 1942, I don't have to read this. Uh, yeah, yeah. But not. history was made last night, and uh, the losers, no matter how it went, were both Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, right. So yeah. if you wanted to just dive into that whole thing. Uh, no, we don't have okay, to. Okay, all right, sweet. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about teams that made Stanley Cup fun. <laughs> okay. Because they play great hockey yeah. all year. Let's go to Con, man. Yeah, PK, obviously a lot of the conversation on the broadcast was talking about how the Oilers towards the end kind of ran out of gas. Was that something that you saw from them? And how long did McDavid actually spend? on the ice because it did feel as though at least watching 18 of those 20 minutes in the third period he was on there and then did you see Leon Dreisaitl's comments as well I might have be I might be getting got about this but is there a chance that he doesn't resign with Edmonton after you know everything that happened well Connor McDavid definitely looked tired in the third but he played half of the third period so I mean any human that plays that much in the third period after that long of a run, I don't care how fast you skate, um, you know, or, or how good you are, you're going to be exhausted. And you could see he was visibly exhausted. And they still had opportunities to tie that game. They had their looks. They had their looks. They could have tied it, but, you know, Florida bent. They didn't break. And the best defensive team got it done. You know, as far as Leon Dreisaitl goes, you know, obviously he's going to reflect – you know, on the Stanley Cup final and his performance. Um, It's a grind, man. It's a grind. Like, 
you know, you got to see what his injury report is. Was he banged up or not? But I'll tell you this, who isn't banged up, you know, come the Stanley Cup final? Everybody's got bumps and bruises. This guy is a top 10 player in the National Hockey League. He's that good. But when you win the Stanley Cup, you realize, when you get to the Stanley Cup final, you realize how difficult it is because it's a physical grind. And for me, you could see he had one game maybe in the series where I felt that his skating, he was he was skating like you normally see Leon do through the middle of the ice, penetrating, creating. He's a facilitator. He's got to be a facilitator. And I, I didn't think he could find that confidence in his game enough. So, you know, personally for him, I'm sure he's going to look back and want to be better in his next Stanley Cup final. He'll have an opportunity to do it again. Will it be in Edmonton? I'll tell you this, you know, it's difficult, man. When you go somewhere and you're the number one guy, it's a lot different than playing behind Connor McDavid. And if I was Leon Dreisaitl, I'd write, I'd want to be riding shotgun with Connor McDavid all day long because the game ain't going to get any easier than that. Um, he's the best player in the world. And you know if he's in Edmonton, they're going to continue to put great players around him and build a winning team around him. And the goal is to win a Stanley Cup. He's already started his career in Edmonton. He's got a great legacy there. You know, if I was him, I'd want to stay with Connor McDavid. But that's the choice. He's earned his independence. He's that great of a hockey player. He can go wherever the hell he wants to go and play. Um, more power to him. He's elite. But he's going to have to look at his game, reflect, and, and get better the next time he gets an opportunity. He goes from Connor McDavid to Sidney Crosby. Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Try title. Uh, Welcome to Pittsburgh. Yeah, be awesome. Once win a cup. Once come win a cup, you go ahead and do that. Um, we started rattling off hockey players in here whenever you said he's a top 10 player, and it's like, there's a lot of really good players that haven't been playing in the playoffs, so like maybe you forget about them because it's much like the NBA. If you're not playing in the playoffs, you are very much forgotten about. Like very McKinnon, obviously. Yep. Yep. I mean, he mm-hmm. he has not played for like a month seemingly or two months, so he is out of out of sight, out of mind. And then Nick in the back, oh Nicky skates was like uh, Dry Sutter was like top ten in points literally every single year. And then you talk about him playing alongside McDavid, it's like. We saw Gensel doing that with Sidney Crosby. And I thought to myself, if I'm Gensel, I'm taking less money so I can continue to play next to Sidney Crosby. Then he gets traded to Carolina and he becomes their star. And he almost <laughs> leads them to the Stanley. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I assume Dreisaitl is also mm-hmm. potentially seeing that whole thing take place. And uh, I'll tell you, I can't wait to see what the moves are this offseason. I can't wait to see what the injuries have been for both these Oilers and Florida Panthers whenever they're inevitably announced because I think a lot of people new to hockey don't understand. There could be like a broken sternum yeah. that, on one sure. of these teams that was just playing last Shoot. night. That, that was literally just playing yeah. last night. Like, uh, oh, guy was playing through like a rolled ankle or something? No, actually he had a broken femur. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you mean? Like, yeah, he he's going to be out for eight months. Yeah. shattered. He's actually missing the beginning of next season because of the game he played <laughs> yeah. in last night knowing that it was going to happen. You hockey players are the best. It was a phenomenal year. Congrats on the great coverage, and we appreciate the hell out of you, man. Thanks, Pat. Love coming on the show, and uh, thank you for everything that you've done for the league this year. It's uh, been a huge difference. The amount of people over the course of the Stanley Cup final that talk about uh, me coming on your show and just your show in general was pretty awesome. So, Continue to do the great work, man. Love watching you guys. Ah, we're lucky to do it. You make our show much better. We appreciate the hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, NHL legend. Jay Tatum. <laughs> Dude, hey, hey, Pat, hold on. Yesterday, so I went down to Elbow Room for one drink. So we went there. And sure. That's all anybody goes sure. down for. Yeah. Yeah. One, it's the quick one. one. It was already okay. a gong show in there. It was already a gong show in there. And there must have been like 10 guys in the bar that they just said, hey, PK. They yelled. And I thought they were going to say like, you, and they started going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just didn't even say anything. I just went like this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's awesome it's been an incredible gimmick we'll be talking to brad stevens next hour i'll i wonder if he has seen your jay tatum impersonations throughout this entire year you're the man ladies and gentlemen pk subban yeah. Yeah. Yeah.